Hey everyone, welcome back, I hope you're well. Today I'm talking about something that's not been highly anticipated but somewhat requested to an extent for me to share my wisdom on this topic. Now it is going to be breaking in Dr. Martens and also some styling. I think as shoes go, I wouldn't say that I was the biggest Dr. Martin expert out there. I definitely know of people that have an extensive collection and only wear Dr. Martens. However, being a Dr. Martens wearer myself and probably wearing them from the age of 16, I mean, I can share some of my wisdom with you. I've also used to work in shoe shops and for shoe companies. Um, my first ever retail job was in shoe. I went there for a few years and then I moved to a more local shoe shop called Mr. Shoe. Thank you. And I worked in the shop there for a bit and then I worked in their head office doing social media and photos and everything else basically. So I have some sort of knowledge I suppose on shoes, etc. I have had, I get this question quite a lot when I'm wearing my Doc Martens is how do I break them in? I've got these Doc Martens, they really hurt my feet, what do I do about it? Blah, 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 blah. Um, there are a few different ways of tackling this god awful part of Dr. Martin owning life. I just want to talk about my first pair of Dr. Martins <laughs> were knee-high boots. Um, I got them when I was 16. I asked my dad for them for Christmas and I don't know where he got them from. I don't think he got them from the actual shop. He found them on online somewhere. But I felt so badass in these in these boots. Yeah, they were knee high. I think they were 24 Isla. Um, I would stomp around them. When I wore them around town or go in the city, I would, honestly, I feel indestructible. I would, sometimes I'd want to get in a fight. I wouldn't get in a fight. Sometimes I would just feel like the most badass bitch in town. <laughs> I'd wear them with my black skinny jeans, a really thick studded belt, like I'm talking the big chunky studs, three tier, with a, a star, belt buckle, um, eagle with a band t-shirt or like a white tank top and a leather jacket. And then after that, I think I just went down, I think then the next part of that with the cherry red standard boots. And then that's kind of when my collection grew. And I've, you know, Dr. Martens in my life have been and gone. I've had like a few different pairs which have either gone missing or broken. I don't know. I don't know. I've lost a few, I've lost some of that festival, so that's sad. But anyway, Dr. Martens, break them in. Okay, so tip number one, which is obvious, but I feel like I've made this mistake before in desperation to have a particular style. Um, you've got to make sure you've got the right size. Um, I'm a size three slash four in, in shoe sizes, but I will always now get my Dr. Martens in a size four because a three will just be a little bit too snug. Therefore, hello blister town. I remember getting a pair of um, Dr. Martens shoes. They were like, they're like the ones that have a strap over them. They look like little old school, they look like school shoes, I guess. Dolly, I couldn't, I couldn't wear them. I could not wear them. I, I tried so hard. I remember walking into town with them on once and I had to stop into Sainsbury's to get plasters because my feet were just bleeding, but they were too tight. They were too small um, and no amount of wearing in were gonna actually make them the right size because they were in fact too small. So um, you have to make sure that you've got the right size, even if it means going, if you're half size, I would go bigger, I'd go on the bigger spectrum because at least you can wear insoles, uh, thicker socks, etc., to make them a little bit more snug. Don't go too small because, oh, you'll regret it. Next, I would say um, thick socks. You could wear like slipper socks if you wanted, but they are, I think they're a bit on the too thick side. I have recently invested, well, I've recently bought a bunch of hiking socks. I'm gonna take my sock off now. I love, I love just wearing, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I bought these for one of my hiking trips and I wore them with my doctor. I mean, you can get thick socks, like say like from Primark or wherever. Um, but I bought these off Amazon and I realized that actually these are winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> Oh, it's a sock, wow. Um, these are these hiking socks, these hiking ankle socks. Obviously you can get them in ankle or you could get them in a taller sort of, a longer style, but they are amazing because they're quite thick, they're really warm, and I think they're quite, they're quite like padded, like there will be no rubbing against these. I've worn them with a few pairs of new shoes recently and my Dr. Martens and they were so comfortable. It was kind of like wearing a slipper. I will put the link to this particular set in the description, but yeah, thicker socks. Oh, not only does it protect your foot, it's more comfortable and it helps to kind of sort of stretch and soften the inside of the shoe. I feel like if you're putting 
so a bit more tension on it it will kind of move it about because um, essentially that's what is causing a lot of the rubbing on the inside is some of the seams um, it just needs a little bit of wear on the inside to just soften it just a little bit that's where we get the blisters from is the kind of hardness of the inside of the shoe so thick socks but I would I would recommend these ones because they are actually like a a hard wearing I guess action ready sock <laughs> another point perseverance so if you've bought a pair of Dr. Martens and they are rubbing and you want to wear them on a day out but you don't know if you want to like commit to them fully because you think that oh by the end of the day I'm going to have blisters and it's going to be really hurting. Um, one thing that I used to tell people in the shoe shop with Dr. Martens and also with Toms because Toms are a tricky one as well at times is wear them as much as you can around the house so when you first buy your pair of shoes get them out of the box put them straight on they're brand new it doesn't matter if they're on the carpet if they're on the furniture because they're brand new and hopefully they're not dirty and wear them around the house as much as you can because at the end of the day the only thing that's really going to truly stretch out your shoe or make them a little bit more worn in is by wearing them in that's what i would tell people all the time is try and wear them as much as you can around the house because you want to get them, you want to get the, the, the lever to sort of just like give a bit and to stretch and to start kind of molding itself to the shape of your foot. So perseverance and wearing them in as much as you can is obviously a big, it's a good step in the right direction. Lastly, picking the, picking the style correctly. I feel like the wearing in process, obviously you can do all those points, but it is also very dependent on the style of shoe that you've bought in terms of how long it's gonna take to wear them in. I would say that I'm a bit of a cheater when it comes to this because I've kind of learned the knack is to just buy styles that are already pretty soft. The original standard Dr. Martin boot is a great boot, and that, but that does require a little bit of wearing in and it's quite a stiff leather. A hack around that one, my hack, is I bought actually the style Pascal, which is the same look of the boot, but the leather is so much softer. It's a lot softer, it's a lot more bendy. For me, I never had to wear in or do that annoying wearing in process with the Pascals, because they were already soft, they are already there, they are already comfy. So if you like the Dr. Martin boot, but you don't want to have the painstaking process potentially of wearing them in, just buy the Pascal, because that is... <laughs> And um, likewise, the vegan styles, I think, are a lot softer as well. The, the leather on them just seems to be a little bit nicer. Well, it's not leather, it's vegan leather, which is a bonus, I guess. The leather, I feel, is a lot nicer. It's a little bit more pricier, the vegan styles, but um, the leather's nicer, it's softer, and it's just got a, a nice feel, and obviously it's vegan, which is, is great. My style that um, I'm showing you today, which I'm styling up, is but right, hang on, I always forget the name, it's Shriver High, oh my god, it's muddy, um, and they, these are, this is why, I, I mean I bought these ones because I'd lost my Pascals, uh, I think I lost them at download one year, and I, 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 bought, I basically stopped wearing Dr. Martens for a while, and then this year I decided, you know what, I want to bring them back into my life, and I, but I wanted something that was a little bit more higher, had a little bit more lift, seemed a little bit more slimline, and I went to a Shriver, absolutely love these shoes and they just seem a bit more chunkier at the bottom as well but the leather on here is so soft so nice i mean inside there is a bit of a dent you can see from the stitching like where it just goes around the heel and where it kind of joins onto the ankle bit that is where that is where it will get you so that's why you gotta make sure you've got like a big sock or something to cover that area um but the shriver generally is a really soft boot a lot soft, softer than the other ones, I'd say. I feel, personally, the most jip I've had with boots, or the Dr. Martens, have been the shoes, because they're quite stiff, like the classic shoe style, which I've had in a few different colours. Um, they, they're the ones that are kind of the, a bit, bit less comfortable. Again, I, I've gone a bit bigger with them recent times, so that it's been easier. One style to avoid if you don't want to do this is patent patent boots so the super shiny ones are the worst for breaking in i feel <laughs> because the kind of material they're made from this sort of like almost somewhat plastic feel to them even though they're leather is so hard to like 
mold and stretch it just sort of kind of keeps its shape um, and it's a lot stiffer and anyone that says oh my god my boots are rubbish I've got the painted ones and I'm like oh that is why because they are the worst bear in mind I mean you can do all these steps to kind of make it easier but it can just you can just avoid any of these potential problems by just buying a softer style boot. But there are tons and tons and tons of different Dr. Martin styles out there now. Um, some people do just prefer the classics and I can understand why. It's kind of like an iconic boot. It's, it's got a lot of cultural background, I suppose. Um, you know, there's so much to Dr. Martin's that make them such a cool brand, an important and historic brand. But yeah, there are so many different styles of boots out there. I hope that that was somewhat kind of interesting and helpful. I'm now gonna style up my boots just to show how versatile that they are. I forgot how versatile that they are. Let's do this. Woo!